The sentencing process for the Coots three, who were all convicted of mischief over $5,000, George Jansen, Marco Van Hugenboss, and Alex Van Herk, began today in Lethbridge, Alberta. Robert Kreitschik reporting for Rebel News. So what the probation officer said that if, you know, I'm not a hindrance to society in general, what they'll do is seek to do other than prison time, they would rather do probation or, or things like that. So it doesn't necessarily mean that they'll actually use that, but, it, you know, it's up to the discretion of the, of the uh, judge to see whether or not he wants to take any of that into account. The, the, the state during those times during 21, 20, 20, 21, 22, they were out of line. They were the oppressors. And many people have forgotten that, but the reality remains that we stood up at that time for what was right. And nothing, that hasn't changed. That hasn't changed for me and those convictions have only become stronger. The three men composing the Coots Three were convicted of mischief over $5,000 for their participation in the 2022 Coots protest and blockade, which intermittently obstructed cross-border traffic at the Coots Sweetgrass Crossing, linking the U.S. and Canada, or more narrowly, Alberta and Montana. This demonstration was peaceful and civilly disobedient, much like the Freedom Convoy in Ottawa around the same time, with the two protests being politically, philosophically, ideologically linked in their broad opposition to what I refer to as the COVID-19 enterprise, this governmental apparatus of surveillance and control and censorship marketed to all of us as some public health measure to reduce COVID-19 transmission. The sentence for this conviction can be either some form of fine, some form of community service, or can include jail time. Unlike any other news media outlet out there, Rebel News had reporters on the ground during the 2022 Coots protest and blockade and were deeply invested in covering the trials that flowed from it all the way up until today in 2024. Remember, we have operational costs. We cannot produce this original journalism for free. Please help us out. Visit truckertrial.com, contribute, and stay up to date with our ongoing coverage. The sentencing process for the Coots Three, three men convicted of mischief over $5,000 for their participation in the 2022 Coots protest and blockade, Marco Van Hugenboss, Alex Van Herk, and George Jansen, began today in Lethbridge, Alberta, but proceedings were immediately adjourned because Marco Van Hugenboss did not complete his pre-sentencing report. Now, what is a pre-sentencing report, a PSR? It's a report that's created after a convicted person meets with a probation officer and engages in an interview. And what I've come to understand is that the interviews in these cases, which took place with Alex Van Herk and George Jansen, who partook in their interviews and completed their PSRs, involve questions related to religion and politics and philosophy, uh, family situations, and so forth. Marco Van Hugenboss spoke with me and explain to me why he did not do that interview. Uh, the court really would like to see this pre-sentence uh, report completed, uh, but I have my reservations on this, and I've made my decision that this is a serious infringement on my uh, rights and, uh, and privacy. And for that reason, I've decided that I will not be doing this report. Um, and that's, at this point, a bit of a problem. I don't believe the court can force it, uh, but I think they're going to put some significant pressure on me to complete this report. And uh, at this point, um, my position stands. It's an infringement on my rights and my privacy. Uh, this whole ordeal has been nothing but a public um, uh, roadshow to some degree. And there comes a point where, you know, we, we've, we've did our best. Um, we, we went through trial. Things didn't go, not everything went the way we would have liked to see them go. And there comes a point where a person makes, makes a stand. And this is where I, I, I'm making a stand because what, I, what the court is forcing or what the court is attempting to force on us is wrong. And I believe it to be wrong. And I have that right. And that's where I stand in relation to, to, to their mandate. So. The next court date for the sentencing process will be August 26th. The final date in which the sentence is expected to be issued from the judge to the three convicted men 
is going to be late September, either 25th, 26th, or 27th. As far as how things are going to turn out, I mean, obviously, it's a guess to me. I haven't done much of these uh, court hearings or anything like that before. And so now with pushing things off, obviously, everything is getting pushed off. Sentencing, setting a date for sentencing, and all those things. So not sure how that's all going to turn out. But this pre-sentencing report is something that most people do, but I believe at this point it's not beneficial. And everybody that's involved in the system, probation officers, lawyers, justices, Crown, etc., they're all saying this is to our benefit. Well, that's interesting because I would say this whole ordeal has been against everything that benefits Marco Van Yugobas, Alex Van Herk, and George Jansen. We now stand here as convicted men who stood up for their families, for, for, their, for their rights, um, and the freedoms of themselves and others, and we're now convicted. And the, like I said, the roadshow goes on. They want more. They want to know everything about you. They want to know about your family situation. They want to know about your, your work, your business. They want to know your financial situation. Uh, they want to know about your views then, now, in the future. I'm sorry. That's not what this is. You found me guilty. That's something that this court has the authority to do, and I respect that. I don't agree with it. But... I don't agree with this request, and at that, and because of that, we 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 adjourn today. And I'm interested to see how far this court will go to put me in a position where they'll force this out of me. So, probation officer, they ask questions of, what does your day to day life look like? Are you a criminal? Are you somebody, an alcoholic? Are you into drugs? You know, and. They want to know what your everyday life is, whether you're an endangerment to society in general or whether you're a peaceable person. They want to know how many children you have, whether you're private school, home school, all those type of things. So basically they ask questions pertaining to what your life, what your life looks like. And I suppose that the information they glean from that interview is then submitted to the judge who may take that into consideration when issuing the uh, send this at the end of the day, right? Yeah. So what the probation officer said that if, you know, I'm not a hindrance to society in general, what they'll do is seek to do other than prison time, they would rather do probation or, or things like that. So it doesn't necessarily mean that they'll actually use that, but, it, you know, it's up to the discretion of the, of the uh, judge to see whether or not he wants to take any of that into account. Yeah, I'm, I'm uh, abstaining from meeting with this officer in on the record, I've met with this. I've talked to this officer um, before, and I briefly talked to her after court today. And she respects my position. She is not legal counsel. She's doing a job, and she's following up. And I've been, I've now been very clear at different times with, with her and my 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 counsel that I'm in a position. I, I have the position right now that I will not be completing this report. Uh, I've been informed that if Justice Keith Yamauchi wants this. He could remand me. He could he could arrest me. That's unfortunate. That goes to show you the authority they hold over one's life for the simple request of I say simple for the for the request of, of information. And this isn't information that has come forward in the courts in relation to the event. This is a interrogation of a, a person's life. Right. Where are our rights, even our rights as convicted Canadians, convic convicted Albertans, and why is this, why is there such a interest in our positions? Is this like, I, 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 to some degree, I understand what they're looking for, but it's not, it's not their business. It's not their business. And where we stand on certain issues is not a crime, but I feel that my answers would be used against me in the upcoming sentencing. And I'm not okay with that. Final question, as far as the tools that you think or know the government can bring to bear upon you to coerce you to comply, what tools do they have in their toolkit to compel you to uh, do this interview and create this PSR? Well, I believe that um, this court has the ability to um, restrain me, has the ability to uh, jail me even to get this information. But again, that would be a serious overstep. And that's something we'll have to wait to see. We'll have to wait to see if, if that's the, the steps they take. But we all know that we live in a, in a, in a very uh, authoritarian 
um, country uh, of late in that, you know, if, if most people don't in, interact with, with the state to this degree, but I've seen a different side of, of, of this country. And if you don't align with their politics, if you don't align with their viewpoint, if you challenge that, which is what we did, we challenged the powers to be. And I've now seen the full power of that state, of that court, of that of these authorities come to bear on us. Yeah. And they're making it out to be, well, we're lawbreakers, um, we're a threat to society, etc. But the reality is, is that they, the, the, the state during those times, during 21, 20, 20, 21, 22, they were out of line. They were the oppressors. And many people have forgotten that, but the reality remains that we stood up at that time for what was right. And nothing, that hasn't changed. That hasn't changed for me and those convictions have only become stronger. Rebel News has been reporting on these unfolding events since their origins at the 2022 Coots protest and blockade. We had reporters embedded at that demonstration creating content that nobody else could. Fast forward today, here we are, Lethbridge, Alberta, 2024, July, and we're still here every single day reporting on these unfolding events. And this is where our beautiful and generous audience comes in. It's your contributions and donations that keep this journalistic enterprise going because unlike our so-called mainstream media competitors, we're not getting handouts to tow the official government line. So folks, visit truckertrial.com, help us out, and stay up to date with our ongoing coverage.